It is Woodard with one W. Uh, Lisa, we talked about that. Yeah, Woodard we, and we, Curry. We, um, <laughs> did Mike, we um, submitted the. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's correct. It's, 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 it's yes. correct. But um, so, just by way of introduction, uh, my name is Anthony Catalano. I'm a senior principal with Woodard and Kern, a senior principal and partner. Uh, and I have with me this evening uh, Dave White, uh, who's also a senior principal, and Mary McCran. Mary McCran uh, leads our grant and funding team, in addition to uh, public engagement uh, support that we provide to to our municipal clients, in particular our large city clients. So uh, we can. Uh, do you have that in or uh, no, the remote? We don't have a clicker, right? Um, the mouse is. Yeah, I can go in the, in the presentation now. Uh, do you want to use Because you can, yeah, you can go to the, the slideshow. Slide yeah, yeah, I was yeah. going to say. Uh, yeah, can't see. This one right here. Right down there, right? So we'll start with, uh, just want to kind of set the stage in terms of the agenda. Firm introduction, just give a brief overview of uh, what it occurred. Some of you may be familiar with us already, but uh, we'll go through that. Our team, we'll discuss a little bit about uh, our team and how we're organized and structured. Project understanding, we thought it would be important to uh, to relay to you, uh, you know, how, how we understand the project to be and the challenges that you are facing. Uh, stormwater is a core practice. We have a number of different core practices within our organization, wastewater, water. Stormwater is one of those uh, core practice areas for us, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, our practice as a whole and where we, uh, the areas that we specialize in uh, within stormwater and flooding. Uh, key differentiators that we offer, uh, one of the things that we discussed with, uh, uh, with the group uh, when we were last here uh, is, you know, this, it's an engineering assignment, there's planning and engineering involved, a lot of challenges. Uh, there are some other firms that could also do the engineering, I think it's important. Uh, that we discuss with you what makes us what makes us different from those other firms and then stakeholder engagement We recognize the importance of engaging with the public uh, I can tell you that uh, I was fortunate to, to be here last week uh, To be uh, to be here for the public forum uh, that you all had. Sorry, excuse my back uh, and and it was uh, it was real important I think to you know, while we've been to many, many public meetings for uh, other clients, uh, I thought, we thought it was important to attend and, and kind of get our finger on the pulse of, you know, what the people are feeling. There was a lot of passion there. We heard a lot of common themes. I think perhaps later on Lisa and or Anthony may brief you on that. Uh, but, you know, we heard things, we heard a lot of frustration, things like there were past studies done, but when is the actual work going to get done? I think that emphasizes the importance of coming up with uh, practical and feasible uh, solutions that are implementable uh, and not just developing studies uh, that will go on the shelf uh, or continue to go on the shelf as perhaps some other studies have. So uh, again, I think that public forum was uh, you know, another reminder of how important it is to come up with feasible solutions for, uh, for the city of Melbourne. Uh, in terms of firm introduction, uh, the company was founded in 1979. Uh, what you see here to the right are actually the founders. And uh, as I explained uh, to Anthony a couple of weeks ago, uh, we, Dave and I were at a, a partners meeting uh, a few weeks back in uh, Newton, Mass. And, uh, and, and the founders routinely will join us for those, for those meetings. They're both retired. Uh, it's Al Curran and Frank Woodard. And the way the company started was Frank Woodard uh, was a professor at the University of Maine, and Al Curran was his engineering student. And then Al went on to go work for uh, other firms, and in the late 70s, the EPA came out with uh, grant and funding opportunities to upgrade wa wastewater treatment plants. And uh, he had called Al, and they talked about forming a company, and they did. So they started with uh, 10 people, and uh, it's grown significantly over time. Uh, we are a U U.S. based uh, national firm uh, with New England roots. You'll see in a little bit an example of some of our uh, New England and Long Island Sound uh, communities that we've supported over the years. Uh, being a thousand people, we consider ourselves not too big and not too small. Uh, we're not too big like some of the f uh, other firms that you may be familiar with that uh, you know may be more focused on international work or maybe 
not as not enough attention being provided to the city, uh, but but also uh, we're not too small. We have the resources where we can deliver across geographies. And I'll just say very quickly, one of the smart things that we did as an organization over the years uh, is to plan for that growth to where we are now, so that we can deliver across geographies and we can share resources across geographies as we need to. So besides our offices. Uh, in Connecticut and, and in uh, Rybrook, New York, uh, we're able to, uh, to leverage the firm-wide resources. We don't have profit centers. You don't have those kinds of pressures. So we really are uh, what we consider ourselves one, one company. And then the overall mission. I think it's kind of led by the founders of the company. I mean, Al Curran is now close to 70. He still gets midnight ice time and plays hockey. and. Uh, goes on the ski, skiing trips with all the employees, as does Frank Woodard, and they really do put the employees first. And the mission that they established when they started the organization was really to take care of their people first. And if they take care of their people first, then they'll take care of the clients, and that's the overall uh, uh, philosophy that they follow. So, uh, a little bit more about us. You kind of get a sense of uh, where we're located uh, in the uh, blue. Uh, in the orange, actually, are states where we operate facilities. What makes us unique as an organization is of the thousand or so of us, there's about 230 or 240 uh, that operate uh, water and wastewater treatment plants. Uh, and so it gives us a unique perspective from the operations side. We also uh, actually run uh, some municipalities. We are responsible for running DPW facilities uh, in two or three uh, municipalities uh, in the Midwest. And uh, we actually own compliance as well. So if there's stormwater compliance or other types of compliance issues, we own all of that. So again, it's a unique perspective from the boots on the ground folks from the operations side. Okay. And then we just wanted a list here to give you kind of a sense of Long Island Sound and, and, and coastal New England communities that we've worked with over the years. Uh, we have a number of them listed here. There's others as well. Uh, again, I think that it provides a, a nice perspective on the challenges that these communities are facing. Uh, there's a number of these communities where we actually are the trusted advisor to the planning boards for these communities where uh, they are also dealing with stormwater and, and uh, management and, and flooding issues and, and we're their trusted advisor in, in that role. And then in terms of how we're structured, uh, we, we really are uh, committed to the city as we have, have said in the past. Um, I think that one of the examples is not only caring and wanting to go to the meeting and listen to the folks, uh, but having two senior partners of the organization here this evening in our last meeting as well. Um, in addition to uh, Steve Laurie, our project manager, uh, who most recently has been involved in, in the White Plains uh, stormwater study that was completed. And Mary McCrane, who brings a really unique skill set uh, to the overall assignments uh, with the city uh, from the planning side. Uh, Mary is a uh, certified planner and really syncing up the engineering with the planning, uh, we think, uh, is something that we could certainly uh, leverage with, uh, with the city and the, the challenges they're facing. And so um, I'm going to uh, pass it on to Dave on, on the project understanding, and then uh, Mary will, uh, uh, will also uh, join in, and, and we'll have some discussion about public engagement and also what I did not mention earlier, uh, grant and funding. We actually have a, a dedicated grant and funding team uh, that uh, we, uh, we utilize to support our municipal clients. And, and most times, it's really part of the existing assignment we have. Uh, it's kind of added value that we provide to our clients, looking for opportunities, helping them with the applications, and securing the, uh, securing the fund. So Dave, did you want to? Sure. Um, the, the challenge that Norwalk faces isn't very indifferent than many of the communities that we have worked with in the past. Um, these headlines that you see here are from your community, um, very similar headlines that, that um, we've encountered in other communities throughout New England. If you check, if you go to the next slide, Anthony. Sure. Um, so we understand the city's challenges. We, we understand that you know there's a lot of passion around this. People's lives have been disrupted. Businesses have been disrupted. Mm -hmm. um, people's homes that they've been in for decades 
have been damaged maybe once, maybe several times, maybe more frequently. Um, so there's a lot of um, emotion around that and passion. And we recognize that we feel as though as part, as part of the process here, having Mary and others that have a planning background bring some empathy and understanding to those personal situations. Um, oftentimes, the areas that you're seeing flooding in the urban environments are not on FEMA flood maps. Therefore, the communities and the residents of those properties don't have the opportunity for flood insurance. So they find themselves stuck in that rock and a hard place. Um, they have damage. There's no recourse as far as going back to their insurance agency and, and trying to recover some from some of those damages. Um, nor are they eligible to get insurance unless they go to the private insurance market, which is very narrow um, at this stage and very inaccessible to, to private homeowners that aren't in the FEMA floodplain. Um, so we recognize that these, these areas of risk, the risks that um, the residents have with their homes being sited in particular locations is not well defined and it becomes a surprise to them. Um, as a result of that, we feel as though it's important to start driving extensive um, engagement with, with stakeholders, whether it's residents, whether it's with the individual department heads within the city, or business groups, um, to better understand and characterize what are the risks and what can be expected in the future with the changes of intensity and rainfall, frequency of rainfall. Um, if you're in a lower lying area closer to, um, to Norwalk Harbor, the um, sea level rise impacts that implications that would occur as a result of sea rise on its drainage systems inland. Um, and then, hey, it's an old city. Um, in many areas, you know, um, you have century-old drainage systems that are in various um, conditions of, um, of operation. Some of it may be um, deteriorated, other may be clogged. I, I know that the city is um, undergoing some extensive heavy cleaning right now and some dredging of some of the open channels. Um, but recognizing that the sensitivity to that old infrastructure and understanding the infrastructure, how it's operating, and its future longevity also plays into the planning process necessary for correcting problems. And then ultimately, when you do get to a, um, to a project that you want to implement, you need to have a particular sensitivity around the construction-related impacts, noise, traffic, business disruption, access to individual and business properties. Um, so those are all very common themes that we've customarily dealt with. Um, ultimately, as part of this process, we're going to identify the risks relative to how frequently an area may or may not flood. And, and the ability to predict that in the future and then align that with the available funding is going to be critical, in which case we're going to develop you know, criteria as to what storms we're going to try to protect for, recognizing that the performance criteria for the drainage systems are going to dictate the capital costs necessary to remedy those problems. So it's going to be, it's going to come down to a balancing circumstance where you've got to have benefit, you got to select the benefit versus the reward, I'm sorry, reward versus the cost of the project. And that's what this um, graph is intended to show. So you want me to continue with this? Um, so as Anthony mentioned, um, stormwater is a core practice with the Moody and Curran. We, um, we define stormwater into five core focus areas. Uh, these, those are the five there, conveyance and flood mitigation, planning, treatment, reuse, compliance, and coastal infrastructure. Um, a little bit more what I mean about that is if you go to the next slide, Anthony. Um, we, we form, our core mission around stormwater is dealing with two particular problems that communities and the public face. One is the annual cost of, as, a, as a result of natural disaster, flood-related natural disasters, recognizing that the cost of those in the United States routinely goes over a billion dollars a year. Um, I was, um, the hurricane that just occurred down in the South Carolinas was placed $125 billion in damage. Not the scale in which Norwalk has seen, but it's certainly very costly nevertheless. Um, and we recognize that driving that is the new reality. Um, frequent major storm events, ex um, some instances extended droughts followed by heavy rains, sea level rise, and then any typical weather patterns that we're beginning to see. And we, we recognize it puts critical infrastructure at risk, and the communities have to you know, find that balance to um, drive economic activity and get, uh, minimize damage to, to both the residents and the business community. You're looking at both coastal flooding as well as other flooding, like rainwater flooding, right? Correct. You'd be doing that, right? Yeah, both inland and coastal, recognizing that you know with the coastal communities, you're at the 
at the edge of both. Um, and the other um, core, practice, core area that we focus on is water quality, recognizing that stormwater continues to be a large pollution source of water pollution. It's one of the few sources of pollution in the United States that's continuing to in increase with the, water, with the uh, water sources and the water bodies. And so we have to find an affordable, um, practical solution to balance both the water quality related issues as well as the water quantity of the flood related problems. So we've assembled, we have a collaborative team of engineers, planners, modelers, um, ex uh, modeling experts, as well as operation and maintenance specialists. As Anthony mentioned, we, um, we do operate a few departments of public work throughout the United States, um, as well as numerous both pump stations and um, stormwater pump stations, as well as water and wastewater treatment facilities. Um, we listen to our clients, we, we, we engage with, in listening to the problems and listening to what individual residences, residents and businesses have experienced is critical for us to understand and be able to predict what's going to happen in the future relative to flooding and developing a remedy. Um, and um, we also um, are very focused on helping our clients seek funding, whether it's through grants, financing, loan funds loan authorizations um, and try to find a way to help finance those projects. Um, oftentimes with FEMA grants or state um, state level grants as well as in some instances state involved in funding. And Dave, if I could just touch on um, one other thing really quickly, if that's okay. Um, so thank you again to the committee um, for the opportunity to be here. And are the folks here tonight residents? Yeah. Residents, business owners? Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for coming. Um, what you're doing tonight is really a service, um, you know, not only to yourself and your families, but to your neighbors. Um, and it's also a service to the city because they don't know everything, right? They do their best, um, but it's very helpful um, to have the information coming from the folks who are being impacted. So I know you have a lot of choices about how to spend your Tuesday, um, but coming here tonight, I think is, um, it's a really helpful thing. And I, I know it's not fun, um, it's not fun to come and talk about you your- keep them fully informed. Um, being flooded or it's not fun to talk about your neighborhood being flooded so I, um, I can appreciate that so I'm sorry if that's happened to you mm -hmm. um, and so um, I just wanted to touch on a couple things um, I think the other important thing that uh, Woodard and Kern really focuses on is leveraging existing information mm -hmm. the city of Norwalk has already done a tremendous amount of work um, through recent contracts and um, through past studies and so understanding those studies and leveraging those I just want to make sure that we point that out we, uh, we are aware um, that there's previous work that has been done um, Lisa and Anthony have been very good about communicating with us already. Um, we are going to get our hands on that information and continue to leverage it. So, we're, you know, it's not work that's been done for no reason. We continue um, to plan on using that information to kind of help us move forward, I guess I would say. So just wanted to make that point. Um, and, um, and, and again, thank folks for coming tonight. Um, and yes, definitely come, be informed, ask questions. Um, the more we talk back and forth, I think the, the more things are gonna be helpful for everybody. So I just wanted to add a couple of things. Thank you, Steve. Um, so I, I referenced five core focus areas within the stormwater practice. Um, these slides here are intended to show some of the services that we provide around those uh, five areas. Um, I'm not gonna read them unless um, somebody has any specific questions about them. Um, this goes to the question you would ask um, about the coastal engineering mm -hmm. focus area. And just sort of um, while Anthony is clicking through those, I can just touch on the grant um, loan, excuse me, grant loan funding piece a little bit. So Woodard and Curran, um, we work very closely with our clients to not necessarily give you a laundry list of opportunities that are out there. Anybody can do that, right? Um, but we work very closely with you to try to understand what your needs are. Um, and then stay on top of and informed about potential grant loan funding programs and then help you position and leverage the work, the work that you're doing to be able to put you in a good position to potentially apply for funding. Um, a lot of funding is competitive, um, but that's why we work really closely to not only understand those, we work both ways, so understanding those programs so we know how to help you fit what you're doing into those programs um, and then vice versa, right? We wanna make sure that you know we're doing the work that we need to do locally to get the information that we need so that we can cover those programs when enough the money is available. So um, we kind of work both ways um, and we have been successful throughout New England on um, securing uh, millions and millions of dollars for our clients. Again, these programs are competitive. Um, sometimes they're open, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're funded, sometimes they're 
not. So um, that's why we have a team on staff um, that really kind of stays informed about what programs are available and which ones aren't. So it's just a real quick primer on how, how we work. So thank you. Just hit on uh, key differentiators that we talked to you earlier about uh, you know, engineering assignments. There are a lot of engineers out there that do engineering work. And I think you already heard a little bit about what we feel makes us different from those firms. But, and if we could just go through, in terms of overall commitment, um, I think we talked about that earlier. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'll add to that is, you know, unlike some firms that may be too large where decisions uh, can't may be made uh, in, a, in, a, in a quick manner, uh, we, we have the, the authority uh, as, as, part of, as partners of the organization uh, to make decisions as we need to. So if Anthony or Lisa call and we need to staff up or we need to attend the meeting on short notice or do certain things, we have the ability uh, to allocate the resources that we need to allocate to make that happen. So we consider that all part of a, a commitment to, uh, to the city. Close communication, you heard a little bit about the public engagement. What shouldn't get lost is the communication that we have directly with the city uh, and, the, and the city stakeholders, uh, and keeping them informed every step of the way, very important. Uh, you know, meeting early on to agree, you know, the frequency of progress meetings and updates and the level of communication and the, the method of communication. Along those lines, typically uh, what we do for these types of projects and many others is to establish a project website. And that project website could be used as a document repository, easily accessible to both the city and also the residents. It's password protected, uh, opportunities to share information, and potentially opportunities to be expanded uh, when the city uh, gets into the implementation phases, the construction phases of the work, and you want to document the progress during construction, so there are opportunities to do that. And then technical excellence, I think you heard a little bit about uh, you know, the stormwater, the modeling, the design, the GIS work that we do. Uh, one thing I'll say about our GIS experts, we have an, an entire team internally uh, that a number of them are engineers as well. So uh, they're not necessarily uh, just there tracing a document, but they understand what they're reading. Uh, they understand what they're laying out uh, as engineers, and um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of benefit to that. And then flood hazard uh, risk mitigation, uh, what Mary didn't mention is she helps a number of communities developing flood mitigation and hazard mitigation plans for communities, so we're very in touch with, with those needs. Uh, support public engagement, I mentioned that, tested proven modeling delivery approach. Uh, Dave is gonna talk to you in a second about an example uh, where uh, you know, we've needed to demonstrate to the public the progress that's been made and the 2D modeling that we use for that. Integrated GIS and engineering, I mentioned that to you. Uh, and also additional added value, you heard about the grant and funding team that we have that we fully intend to leverage for the city uh, in addition to our overall experience supporting uh, municipal planning boards and their challenges with stormwater management and flood mitigation. Uh, and on the operations side, we talked to you uh, earlier about not only having consultants on our team, but uh, operations experts as well and uh, being able to gain some insight from them as necessary uh, through the course of a project. So this is the, the, the last segment, a couple of slides here I just said wanted uh, Dave to just touch on, kind of give you a sense of uh, you know an example project where the public engagement was very successful and, um, and, and the public appreciated the level of communication that we offered and so Dave if you, if you will. Um, this is this is a project that we just completed for the city of Quincy, Massachusetts. Um, the city had engaged a um, park designer to do a rehabilitation of the existing park called Kincaid Park. It was a six million dollar renovation to the park, um, with the intent that um, the construction was going to start right after the school year this June. However, the park designer, very similar to what you'll find with um, many site engineers, whether it be residential commercial development, looked solely at the site, site drainage exclusively and made sure that they were dealing with their own drainage. Um, hadn't considered that the park itself, as well as the neighboring communities, the neighboring houses, about 50 residents in, in the same area, routinely get flooded from runoff coming from the hills up gradient of the site. Um, in some instances, the flood depths were around five feet of depth 
in, in, in these areas. Um, so the, the administration said, well, hold on a minute here. We're about to put $6 million into a park. We have a neighborhood that's routinely flooded. Um, what should we be doing both to um, protect the investment in the park, but also to protect the, res the neighborhood adjacent to the park? And so they asked us to take a look at what elements we could do <coughs> install in the park quickly for the construction season this year to improve the park resiliency, but look at a long-term opportunity to protect the economically stressed neighborhood adjacent to it. Um, so what we did is um, we took we did a um, two-dimensional hydraulic model of the entire watershed, and with that we identified the flood risk for a, new, a number of storm events listed there, the one through the 100-year storm event, and we identified a number of short-term resiliency measures for the park. For example, moving electrical equipment above the flood elevator. Um, selecting materials in the park that were less prone to being damaged by flood waters. And we identified a long-term indication for the neighborhood. Given the scope of the magnitude of this project, it was a significant remedy. It's a $14 million remedy. So clearly it's not something that is in the city's capital budget, and hence we're trying to help the city now identify potential funding sources to appreciate, uh, to offset some of those costs. Mm -hmm. Some of those funding sources are the FEMA has a mitigation grant, a community development block grant and escape the revolving um, loan funds. As part of this process, we were able to, um, to QA, QC the city's GIS data set for drainage. What we found is when we got the data, there were a number of entry errors into the GIS database where we um, were actually finding and identifying the errors, flagging them so that the city could go back and correct them at a later date. And making, as Anthony indicated, our GIS and Operators are also engineers, so they were able to make informed decisions as to um, whether they had to make an assumption on the model or whether we need additional data to bolster the model and to do a sensitivity test to see if it would make a difference with the results. Um, so we did it, and what we did is we concluded the effort with developing a simulation tool out of the software package. And the simulation tool is a plan view of the, of the, of the watershed, and it, we introduce a storm event on it. Simulates the the extents, the planned set extents of the flood. Similarly, in that same simulation, we can identify a particular pipe or a set of pipes in the network and watch how this range pipe is performing during that simulation. So what I'm going to show you is that a result of that model here, the hundred year event. Um, this is the this is the watershed. Um, you'll see as when we start the simulation that the areas that are subject to the inundation start turning blue. So if you can imagine, if you knew where your property was on this map, and we get the opportunity to blow this up to any scale, so we can get down to an individual lot size or a watershed scale map mm -hmm. such as this. Um, this is about a 2,000 acre watershed. Um, numerous drainage areas throughout the watershed. We are focused in the general location where that red horizontal line is. That is the main drainage line. Thank you, Anthony. Um, and just below that line is the Kincaid Park and the adjacent neighborhood. And so if you were to hit run, you can um, we'll run through this, and you'll see as the storm develops, you'll see the areas begin to flood. Um, and the pro po pipe profile on the lower right. And as the storm starts to recede, you'll see the flood waters recede. Um, and this became a very important tool for us to communicate to not only the City departments, the inter they were, there were four city departments, the mayor's office, the planning department, the public works department, the rec sports and recreation department, all had to understand what was going on with the park, as well as the neighborhood, but also to communicate that to the general public as to where we saw the problem areas within the city, within this Washington, and particularly in the neighborhood. So that, that, that concludes our presentation. I'll come back to the front. I know I blocked you the whole time and then I left at the end. <laughs> but uh, I, we do want to thank you for